Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, has just signed a bill stating that Asian American history will be taught in the classroom. But then he also signed a bill banning a lot of Chinese citizens from buying land in Florida. So what's going on here? Yeah, we got to talk about it because this is going viral in a couple Asian circles on the internet. Is it good? Is it bad? Are Asians being used as a pawn? What's going on? Um, so we're going to break down what's happening with the bills, internet comments, our own takeaways. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Andrew, from silly to serious, always breaking it down on Hop Hop Boys. I would say this is not my favorite topic. I'm not super into politics, you know, presidential hopefuls and things like that. But this is generating a lot of interest within the Asian community right now. Now, despite most Asians not living in Florida. Yeah, because a lot of people are split because this does have to do with Asians. Because on one hand, it seems good. Oh, great, Asian American history being taught. I think all states should have that, right? However, then, oh, what about the banning of Chinese? And what are the details on that? Is right. it banning Chinese people? Is it banning PR, visa holders, green card holders? We don't know. I'm confused. So, of course, we got to get into it, Andrew. Uh, real quick, we got to talk about the first bill, SB265, that bans Chinese citizens from pretty much buying property. But there's a lot of details. If you guys want to look into it, we'll just pop it up right here. I mean, is it performative or is it not or is it legit? Because Texas proposed it first. They scaled it back. Florida got a medium version of it. But uh, a lot of people are like, what is this? Is this just DeSantis trying to run for president? Because Asians only make up like 2.5% of Florida. Chinese way less. So why would they even do this? Yeah, I think that it might be to show that he can stand up against China. Right. But also some people fear that if other states follow suit, that it could lead to uh, the discrimination being passed down the line, not from just Chinese entities and companies that want to buy farmland, but down the, to Chinese people, like individuals right. who want to buy houses. And a lot houses. of the Asian American community, I think this is why there were so many comments, Andrew, is split on this because some Asian Americans are like, oh man, they're going to go against all Asians. Some people are like, man, I'm American. I'm proud of being Asian, but I'm against China too. So it's like all super complicated. And I think that that's why we're going to get into. Then of course, the general education bill, Andrew, is him signing that AAPI history be required to be taught in Florida schools. A lot of people think that that's good in a way. And a lot of people are surprised they didn't even have it to begin with. But then other people are like, man, you guys are just being used as pawns because he just banned CRT and AP African-American studies. So he's trying to pit the minorities against each other. And that generated a bunch of comments. Wow. All right, well, let's get into the comments section. First, we're going to get in the comments about the general education bill, about AAPI history being taught in schools. Somebody said, man, I'm pretty surprised they didn't even have it as part of the curriculum already. And someone said, yep, that's Florida for you. It goes state by state. And Florida only being 2.6% Asian, why would they teach it? You know, why would they teach like the railroads if that happened in California? Of course, they're going to teach it more in California. Yeah, I mean, listen, I do think that they probably spend more time learning about, like, the Cuban immigration <laughs> right. to Florida versus, like, in Washington, maybe you wouldn't learn as much about the Cubans, to be honest, you know? So I guess it's, it just kind of fits the demographics. Also, we don't know how much API history is being taught. Is it a day, half a day, two days, a week? I don't know. And so this other person took it to a macro issue being like, this is why America's falling apart, man. People in different states, they receive completely different public educations. We don't even know the same things anymore. I mean, it is true that America, Andrew, it is a very big country, and, and history can vary a lot depending on, like, what state it is. Yeah, for sure. Somebody said Asians are just being used as a pawn here. He banned CRT. He banned AP African American Studies. And then he's trying to get Asians to increase his ratings, whether it's in a local sense of Florida only or a national sense once he runs for president in 2024. Can't you guys see through the smoke? Ooh, yeah. I mean, I think this could be part of the play. You know, like we said, uh, you know, there's not a big Asian American population in Florida. Even when he was signing the bill, it doesn't look like he's surrounded around by a bunch of Asians. I believe there's one half Asian woman next to him. But yeah, on a national scale, it does look good that he did it. It does. Do you think it was a calculated political move, almost like giving For up sure. a pawn, which is the AAPI thing to win a I, rook or whatever? I would just imagine a lot of, if not everything, is a political move at this point. Somebody said, let me guess, his Florida version of AAPI studies has people holding hands at the skating rink dancing while people were building the railroads. <laughs> Obviously, um, this calls into question the implementation and the execution because the bill is one thing. And we all know, Andrew, the public, they're concerned with their own lives. They're concerned with the Kardashians, all this stuff happening on TikTok. They're going to clap and be like, hey, that was something good. But nobody is ever going to follow up on the implementation. Right. Somebody said, uh, man, 
I was a Republican and I was hopeful that DeSantis was going to be a moderate, classy Republican like the ones from the yesteryears, but he's just done calculations and he's going harder right because he knows that's the only way he can win. So now he's just doing whatever he can. If he thought being a moderate Republican was going to win, that's what he would do too. Right, right. And I think that's a lot of people. Basically, they're appealing to the most extreme ends of the spectrum right now. But a lot of people got a question, Andrew. Why is that working too? Because if these politicians didn't get coached by a bunch of millionaire consultants that that was the position they needed to take to have the best chance to win, would they do it? I don't know. I think a lot of people right now in 2023, Andrew, they are basing their political ideologies off of what will win, right? Right. Somebody said, uh, I hate the current state of teachings about African-American history. This is also somebody uh, that is African-American commenting. I'm black. All we learn is the bad stuff that happened to us, like slavery Mm -hmm. and the civil rights movement. What about all the inventions and great contributions we actually had to do to society that have nothing to do with struggle? How come when you learn about minority things in America, you don't learn positive things, only just negative things, possibly sympathetic things at best? Right, yeah. And I think that this is... Totally legit. I think that history moving forward, especially the stuff that you learn in school as a kid, should be focused more on like even a little bit leaning more towards the positive because I think as a kid, that's what you want to hear more of. And then if you want to study it even more specifically, then you get into the nitty gritty of all the... uh, the really bad details. Yeah, you know, a lot of ugly. interesting comments, Andrew, on the general education bill side. Like we said, we could go on forever, but those are the ones we pulled. Moving on to the more controversial banning of Chinese citizens from buying property, SB 264. Like we said, guys, we're not going to get into the legal minutia. It gets super complicated. Andrew, somebody said, um, this just turned into a huge inter-Asian debate about China versus Chinese Americans versus Asian Americans versus Asians that are pro-China, anti-China, or neutral. Listen, this just descended into a bunch of stuff. Listen, I'll tell you this. Uh, on a multiple different levels, there is a group of Asian Americans that are generally very, very anti-communist. So they're like against anything Chinese, even though they're Asian, right? Right. Which... You know, for their own reasons, right? And then there's a group of Asian Americans that are like, no, don't do anything against China because that's going to trickle down to hurt Asian Americans that are not even Chinese. Right. Right. Because So then there's that type of philosophy that's like, oh, it's going to affect everybody. So now, which one do you guys more agree with? Is it going to affect everybody and trickle down? Or is it just going to stop communist China? Yeah. And then... It's just complicated, guys. I mean, there might be like three to four to five significant factions arguing about this. Maybe some are in the middle, some are on that side, some are on that side. Andrew, you have an interesting uh, analysis that was provided by our Chinese comedian friend, Peng Dong. Yeah, Peng. uh, So Peng's from China, and I was talking to him about this uh, situation, and he was just kind of like saying that, you know— he, it, it may not, the language might sound like they're only trying to block Chinese companies right now from buying agricultural land, which is two acres or more right now. But could that discrimination against Chinese trickle down to Chinese who are trying to buy houses? Now, my kind of thought is that if it's Chinese individuals who are PR holders, visa holders, green card holders, who are supposedly under the bill still able to buy houses, then if they overpay the real estate agent then I feel like the real estate agents, to be honest, are going to give in to that, and they're going to take the money. Right. But you just can't buy agricultural land nearby military bases, which I guess, in a way, kind of makes sense. Yeah, I could see it. It totally makes sense, but there was this big argument saying, why don't we just ban all foreign passport holders from buying land if you actually want to shift the market, since Chinese make up such a small percentage of Florida's sales. And that is true, guys. So not only are there not that many Chinese in Florida, but actually... On a national level, not that much farmland or agricultural land is owned by China. Right. Because in a Vancouver, very, very small amount. Because in Vancouver, Canada, Andrew, the Chinese were actually boosting up the housing par- prices in a very, very significant way. They just banned all foreign passport holders in Canada from buying land. Right. Because the market was like going so out of control. I mean, that's pretty harsh in a way if you guys think about that. Somebody know? said, uh, overall, I hate this guy, DeSantis, but I agree with this law and I'm Asian American. And of course, um, yeah, like we said, this kind of goes back to like a bunch of other things, you know. I think that totally this ban does have some logic behind it, but obviously you'd go, well, why did they really implement it? Yeah, what I would like to see, I think it'd be better if they were making it very, very specific on how they would exactly execute and implement this so that it doesn't build fear amongst other Asian Americans. Because obviously a lot of Asian Americans are looking at this like, yo, 
Republicans being anti-Asian again, you know, that, yeah. that's the feeling. That's and the other feeling. people were like, guys, can't you see this is all the U.S. military industrial complex trying to seed negative mm. thoughts in your mind because they are headed for war because that is going to make them more powerful, richer, and stronger. Just saying, guys. Hey, another issue that is hard to talk about. But on this channel, we don't really break it down because that's not really an Asian thing. Somebody said uh, this was so performative. It was performative because Chinese don't move the needle in Florida, just like the AAPI bill, because we have no idea how that's actually going to get taught, is also perform performative. Mm. Basically, none of this stuff really means anything. It is just designed to activate people politically one way or the other. It's honestly, honestly, David, even us making this video, I guess kind of plays into it right. because we they fell into the performance. We, we fell into it because it happened and it's actually maybe in a sense, not the biggest deal. Neither of them. Obviously some of them are more positive and negative than right. others. You could, I guess you could extrapolate it out yes. and then make it a big deal. But at the end of the day, Ron DeSantis is getting his name out. Cause we have to say his name if we're talking about the story. Yeah. And literally I think that it does strengthen him with his base. And then he hedged with the AAPI bill and he did it with the ban. So he's thinking really in terms of voting base, because the people who are mad about the China ban are more likely than not, not even really voting. Right. So he right. basically made a voting algorithm populist calculation oh, and made a read on it. Oh, we played it to his hands, man. He made the news and we're talking about it. Ah, uh, man, let's get into our takeaways, Andrew. Like I said, we could go into comments like forever and some people are arguing about this minutia, that minutia. Ultimately, I do think that this is just... Classic identity politics, right? Mm. And I do not want to spend my heart, my spirit, my soul engaging in something when I know that essentially the real things that are really like about the economy and like all these military interventions, it, those are not being discussed because those are too complicated for the average human to wrap their head around. And a lot of people feel like that stuff is so over their head or above their pay grade. Right. Nobody wants to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I think it almost goes to show you, man, you guys got to focus uh, on, on yourself and your local community too. I think that's first and foremost should always be the most important. Your state, your city should be the most important. Do you above all this national stuff because it's like... Man, yeah. I mean, you're just going to hear a lot of stuff over the next year. You know what I noticed, Andrew? Everybody in America right now, and it's working because people are being tricked into it or whether it's just natural to organically do it, they are being tricked into thinking about the watch face, but they are not thinking about the gears and the mechanisms behind the watch face. It's almost like me arguing about the Android skin but not the actual operating system of Android. You, right. you know, you can skin Android to look like pretty different based on the uh, phone manufacturer. Uh -huh. So I think that just people cannot bring themselves to question the actual things that need to get questioned, right? Um, I think, of course, there are some real issues behind this, Andrew. What do you think about the split in the Asian American world regarding anything China? Oh, man. Because you, you got a whole range of opinions and a lot of people distributed almost evenly across the whole thing. I do think, unfortunately, a lot of people are going to vote moving forward based on the China issues. Maybe especially the Asians, right? Because it, it affects the Asians the most, right? Because right? they're thinking about Asians in Asia, right? Yeah. Or whatever thinking, China is or isn't doing in Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think that... It's going to be a split that we see, guys. Um, some people are going to be more empathetic and understanding. Some people are going to be a little bit more naive, and some people are going to be a lot more fearful. And I, it's so hard to pinpoint what Asians should do. I don't think Asians all should do one thing. You know what I think they should just, do, though, is they could look into it yeah, more. Yeah. I definitely don't think people use their... It's not like people feel strong emotions about something and go, oh, yeah, let me do more research into it. I just hope that this video help you guys understand what's going on a little bit more. And we can not tell you everything, but just look into it yourself. Educate yourself. Do not just follow the headlines. That's why we always try to delve past the headlines into the story. But, you know, I don't know. Long story short, Andrew, politicians, especially in election season, are always busting out different moves, Andrew. Do you trust slick moves, not unslick moves, or does it not matter because you're still trying to run... Like, do you trust a really slick crossover in a hezzy, or do you see trust a politician where you can see them coming because they're so unsmooth with their handles? Well, I'll tell you this, man. Because they're both trying to bust moves. Some unqualified people have won based on the fact that they seem to be more transparent than others. So if people want transparency over 
I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I can't, I can't answer that question. You guys let me know in the comments down below what you think. Let us know what you think of uh, Ron DeSantis, of the AAPI bill, of the ban of Chinese buying property, and ultimately, what do you think of our takeaway of like all this stuff? Yeah, it's a thing, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not putting my heart and soul into it. You guys let me know, but clearly I think a lot of people are just based off the comment section. It got people fired up. Let us know. Uh, until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.